This is Mark Snyder with the Worship Song Band, and I'm going to show you some of the networking features of Worship Song Band. Um, so one of the things that's interesting about Worship Song Band that um, we've had in our program for um, about two years now, but then we've, we've recently enhanced it quite a bit, is this networking feature that we have. Um, so if you look at this image down in our um, recording here, this gives you an idea of what it is we're trying to do with networking. So basically, um, what we really want to do with this is to bring the entire band into the process of using tracks. So rather than just the tracks being used for, for, for performance, like being run by the drummer, maybe being run in the back of the house, or being run by the worship leader, um, what networking allows you to do is it allows the whole band to use the tracks together. Um, and the way it does that is we have this notion of a master and a slave that we have. Um, so everything is connected wirelessly. Um, every, all, all these uh, devices will discover themselves when they're run together. Everything is connected wirelessly. And um, one, one device is typically set up as what we call the master. Um, and the master is denoted by this green arrow here in the corner of the uh, whichever one is the master. So this window up here that my cursor's over, that's set up on my machine here to be like my desktop. I'm actually running two copies of Worship Song Band in this demo and showing you how they would work together. So um, it, it's just as if one of them was running on my tablet or my um, Android or something like that. Um, and then these other, other devices, such as uh, an iPad, an Android tablet, they can be used as um, networked cord viewers um, or, or um, networked remote controllers. Um, and what, how that looks is basically you're running an entirely separate copy of Worship Song Band, and it is slaved as to what's going on on the master. Um, and so it will show you the state of the song that is being played on the master, but but the uh, user of that tablet will have independent control of the GUI if he wants to. So for instance, I can go up to this one here and take the chord view. And so I can look at chords on one of my, uh, on, on my tablet while the master's playing, you know, looking at something else. And like somebody else might be looking at the mixer. Um, so you have your own display of the state of the song, and you can do with it what you want. Um, one of the nice things about this is you can capo the chord view. So like I can say, uh, let's say I want to capo this up a couple. So um, I could play an A here, for instance, with a capo of three, and I have my own viewer of that. Um, I haven't changed the key of the song or anything. I'm just doing a capo view, essentially. So that's really nice. So each, each musician has his own controllable chord chart that's synced to the state of the song. Um, the other thing that happens with this is that if, if, if you enable remote control on your master and on one of the slaves, then what happens is actions that are taken on one of the slaves affect the master. So like if I click the chorus here to move the song timeline, Basically, what happened is that got sent over to the master. The master changed the state of the timeline and broadcast that back out to all the clients. So, um, and, and similarly, if I make a change to the mix here, it will get synced to the clients as I make it. Or if the master makes a change, it will get synced. So it's almost as if um, for, for nodes, like I said, where the remote control is enabled, um, you, you're jointly controlling the mix, um, you're jointly controlling the song timeline, whatever. So it basically means you can entirely control worship song band during a playback from your tablet, even though the app is not running on your tablet. It's running on this laptop hooked to your house. And the advantage of that is this laptop can be playing the tracks. It can be hooked to uh, a USB um, audio mixer, it can be hooked to be doing your lyric displays like I show in other videos. 
Um, and you don't have to have all that gear or anything up on your stage. You just have your tablet wirelessly connected, doing the um, doing the control of it. Um, so that's that's the the, the fundaments of, of networking um, the way we've always had it and the way people have been using it in churches. But the new thing that we've added um, to to this for version 4.0 is very interesting. Um, so what we've done basically in our network mode, um, this is this is kind of our settings page for it. And you can read about this online. There's a pretty good documentation of this on the website. Um, the new thing is this sync audio playback feature that we've added. So sync audio playback is designed to take advantage of a technology called Ableton Link. Um, Ableton Link is a open source project of the company that makes Ableton, which is the um, kind of a very high-end DAW software that's used by a lot of bands and a lot of big churches. Well, Ableton Link is this open source project they've done to try to enable the concept of a shared grid, a shared time grid between applications. So like you can be playing a, a, a drum beat machine, for instance, on one app and uh, a metronome on another and, and a synth over here or something like that. And they, and they can all be synced to the same grid timeline. So as you, as you see these beats counting off here, that's the Ableton Link grid counting off. And if I look at the setting on these, it's counting off over here as well. Um, so what we did with Worship Song Band um, 4.0 is we have integrated Ableton Link into the program. And the main reason we did that um, was not so much so we could sync with those other Ableton Link apps, although you could do that. Um, it's to allow the networked copies of Worship Song Band to sync to themselves. Um, and th the main reason you would want to do that is because um, we can play these, this audio in sync to where audibly you hear it in sync. Um, there's a, a, a latency slider I'm going to show you a little bit later um, that helps you do that, and I'll talk about latency in a little bit. Um, so what happens is when I hit play on my master, or if I hit play on the slave because the play command is one of the ones that synced back to the master, uh, everything will do a count in and everybody will start on the same Ableton Link grid. So the tracks will play together on multiple devices um, in the same time, basically. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll go to my chord chart here. Um, and I'll, I'll go to my mix over here so you can see it. Um, I'll go to the beginning here. I'll press play. See how it counts in. Now, what's Intro. happening here is um, both devices, bo both copies of Worship Song Band are playing in sync. Um, and this works over the network as well. Um, Chorus. So, um, and the reason you would want to do that is this. So I'm upping the click in my slave right now. I'm adding some piano in my slave. Verse. So I'll stop that. Um, on the band mix here, on the band mix page of the slave, basically when you pop this up, when you're running in network audio mode, this becomes a control for your own personal mix coming off your tablet. So um, but this, this sort of relies on the audio being present on both devices at once. So we've added some features to help you more easily sync your libraries together between the, this master. So, so basically the audio files are pre um, installed in the library on all these devices. You only have to do it one time, basically, as long as the song doesn't change. Um, and then um, the audio is played from both devices at the same time. And what the syncing gives you is basically it gives you an in-sync playback on your device of a personal mix of those tracks, essentially. So you have, you have your own mixer with your own click, um, your own instruments if you want to put them in there, your own cues, 
that are just playing off your tablet and only to like your headphones. So it, it essentially gives you um, a, a part of an in-air mixer system. It doesn't give you the part of an in-air mixer system that lets you hear your own instrument. You might have to do like a, a, a Y box or something to, to be able to hear your own instrument in your headphones if you just wanted to hear yourself. But it lets you like do your own click, do your own cues. Um, you can have like a confidence mix. Like let's say you're playing the acoustic guitar and it's not even in the house tracks, but you want to like have a confidence mix of what that acoustic guitar will be doing in your ear. You can use this as a confidence mix or something like that. So um, that's that's essentially what um, the networked audio mix function does. Um, and so uh, it, it's kind of interesting. So as you play in sync here, every time you hit play, it'll count in again. It'll sync to the grid. You can do everything you can do with Worship Song Band running by itself in this synchronized audio mix mode. So I can cue a jump, for instance, and the tracks will jump in both the um, house, what the house is hearing, and the master, and on my device, and on everybody's device, too. So if they're all playing in sync, basically, then Chorus. that'll work. So you'll hear everybody jumps here. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this before I sign off. Um, the uh, one thing that's true when you're playing an audio like this is that the audio pathway through different devices has different latency. So, um, for instance, you can be playing off your Mac with very low latency and off of your uh, um, Android or iPad and it might have like 100 milliseconds of latency. And you'll hear 100 milliseconds of latency. So we needed to put in something to account for that. So what we did is we put in a latency slider on the band mix. And I'll let you hear that. This is my latency slider here. So I'm going to move it. I'm, I'm purposefully putting the audio out of sync. Now you wouldn't want them out of sync, but um, you'll find if you run this on your tablet or your iPad that you'll need that latency slider to be adjusted ahead so that the latency inherent in those playback devices is accounted for and everything sounds the same. And really that latency only affects your, your mix. So it only affects your personal mix whether you hear it in sync or not. So um, you, can, you can adjust it so that audibly the mix you hear is in time with the what you're hearing through like the house or, or anything else that you're hearing and then you can you can play along and be in sync basically um, and since this is kind of a, as you can tell it's kind of a, um, a new feature I, I'd say it's a little bit experimental what you could really do with this um, the other thing we added was a mute so like if it goes off or something um, like you know or you get the latency adjusted wrong and you can't play with it you just kill it in your head, in, in your um, in your own headphones, you can kill it. And, and that's what that, that mute is for, basically. Um, so when you're playing like this, on your mixer, the main mixer here controls the house mix, just like it does in any network mode. So basically, you're controlling the house Earth. mix, and here you're controlling your own mix. So that's, that's uh, um, I think that's a pretty major addition to what networking can do for you in Worship Song Band. Um, and, and like I said, the, the process of bringing tracks to your whole band and making tracks a tool for your whole band is, um, is really uh, brought along quite a bit with this kind of capability. So we urge you to check this out. In Chorus. Our band.